purple iguana as well. And also, this is another one that came from one of the hackers. Uh, was want to know is there a multiverse or how many universes are there? Now, this is where we get into our quantum. We, we do get we, we get a bit quantum here. Yeah. yeah. Um, the whole multiverse thing is was originally created as a way of trying to explain why we have a universe that we can actually live in, because that's pretty unlikely, actually. Um, <laughs> you've, got, you've got these physical constants, these sort of things like, you know, how, how strong is gravity, how fast is the speed of light, all these different bits and pieces. Um, and if you change any of them, even by a tiny bit, the universe just doesn't form in the way it is around us. You almost certainly don't form stars and planets and stuff. And so it looks as though the universe has been kind of fine-tuned for us to exist. And that seems a bit unlikely, frankly, because um, why would anybody bother? Um, and who would bother and who would be doing the bothering and that sort of stuff? So one yeah, other way some, of explaining Some this, people have answers for that. So some people do have answers for that, but <clears> they're not they're not answers that science can deal with because they're not based on measurements. They're not based on knowledge. They're based on faith, which is fine, but yeah. not really scientific. So... The other way of looking at this is, well, actually, there's every possible universe out there. Every possible value of all of these constants exists. And the ones that life can exist in and that people can exist in have people in, and we, we can look at it, and the ones that don't, don't. So it's not that we're in a special universe. It's just that we're in the universe we could possibly be in, and that's fine. So that's where the, multi the idea of multiverses comes from. Um, and that's, again, a bit of a thought experiment thing. It's not something you can make any measurements about, but it's a useful way of thinking about it. But when you start putting that idea together with quantum mechanics, where you've got um, odd things like the uncertainty principle, which means you can't actually know exactly what's going on if you know where it's happening, and you can't know where something's going on if you know exactly what's happening, all this sort of stuff, on small enough scales, then you get to the possibility that it might be in theory, and I'm getting very cagey here, it might be in theory possible for information to just about travel between these different multiverses. And then maybe, in principle, you could make some measurements of what the other ones are and either test or uh, and prove or disprove the, the theory. Now, that's not something we can do now, but in theory, it might be possible at some point in the future. Um, and if it is true, then there must be an infinite number of multiverses. It must be every single possible universe, basically. See, I have um, <clears throat> I have uh, some information actually, Ooh. but um, because as you know, I I'm quite into my quantum physics, and yeah. uh, I have quite a lot of conversations with um, uh, Vlatko, Professor Vlatko Vidral, who's professor of quantum information science at the University of Oxford, and uh, I do a show where I explain uh, quantum entanglement, superposition, and quantum teleportation. The fact that we can move objects between different places without actually passing through any of the space in between yeah. which is odd i'm not going to go into that now nope, but <laughs> um we have asked um Blackco and uh, some of his quantum colleagues you know this idea it always comes up about the many worlds theory and uh the brilliant response from them is because superposition is proven to exist that objects physical objects Yep. can do exist in more than one place at the same moment in time, yep. then that means that there absolutely must be many universes. But because we can't observe them, we're not yep. interested in them, so yeah, but whatever, is basically their <laughs> response. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. And, but, but now, see, when I, sp I had, um, I had uh, dinner with Vlatko a couple of weeks ago, trying to get up to speed with some of the latest developments. And he, he says that at the moment he's working next door to some experimental physicists who, that now we can slow down, I think it's electrons they're working with, yeah. but you can, he can view, they can view them literally uh, millions of many, many milliseconds. They can yeah. slice these electrons up so they can view them at milliseconds. And he says that it's, it's they are getting some measurements which are hinting that there is communication between uh, the places at the same moment in the same time. They can see the superposition. Um, cool. Now, and it's quite a bold claim, I know. Yeah. But mm. the fact that we can, you know, the technology is there to be able yeah. to view and slice these tiny, tiny objects up into those tiny things. So I, th I think it's... That's astonishing. It is yeah. astonishing. And it's fascinating thinking, wow, people are genuinely talking about and... And people will say, well, it's lunatic for the time being. <laughs> but the, all these new things that keep happening through technology. So yeah. maybe we can, we will get yeah. some access to these other universes that exist. Yeah, maybe the manager before I retire, that would be good. 
be a nice holiday. It would, yeah. <laughs> can I go to the can I go to the universe in which I'm really rich, please? <laughs> ah, yeah, that that one's pretty unlikely, I'm afraid, John. <laughs>